Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this afternoon, we shall be looking at the whole, you know, character of Vibes Cartel. And Vibes Cartel is a big name, right? He's a larger-than-life name, the king of dancehall music. And this reigning king of, you know, great heroism, right? Many people see him particularly as he has been released from prison as someone who is the teacher, right? They call him teacher in Jamaica. He is the professor um, and he is worth, I guess, some of our time and we need to know who is this man. But the question I'd like to pose today in this video, is Vibes Cartel being prepped to become a future prime minister of Jamaica? Is Vibes Cartel, right, a Deja Palmer being prepped to become a future Prime Minister of Jamaica? And some of you might be saying, wow, that is not going to happen. Not in my lifetime. Well, it might just happen because that is how our societies are heading, the direction in which we are heading criminality, particularly in Jamaica, as I have been saying on this channel for a long time, that criminality is what reigns supreme in Jamaica. And many of our people, even in the upper echelons of society, do practice criminality. And they make lots of money from criminality, right? Obscene profits from criminality. So we should not be surprised if Vibes Cartel becomes or is being prepped as I'm suggesting in this video, to become the future Prime Minister of Jamaica. Now, I'm not here suggesting now that he is going to become the future Prime Minister of Jamaica. Only God knows that. I am no God, and I am not omniscient, right? So, therefore, I'm not suggesting that I am certain, I'm 100% certain that he will become. But we ought to be also wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. We ought to be intelligent. God made us with intelligent minds to look and to assess at things and to look and to examine them, you know, with all of the intelligence and intellect that he has endowed us with. Now, let's begin, um, shall we, with the, uh, with loop. Loop Barbados, right? So we're going to begin with Loop Barbados. Let me see if I can share my screen here and you will see an image of Vibes Cartel being posted and you will see him there. And that question is being asked to, you know, it's suggested here in Loop Barbados, new music. And this is Loop, the Barbadian edition, I'm thinking. New music release, Vibes Cartel for president. And that's the question being asked. And this was actually written on January 13, 2020. So even before these people become prime ministers and so forth, they already have those plans. So if you think that elections just happen overnight and things are not planned in advance, then you are a child. You have the mind of an infant. Now, this was written by Devaney Ellis, and it says, despite having been in prison for the last six years, Dives Cartel has been able to hold the number one stop in the world of dance hall. Now, with the release of his latest project, Carter attempts to imagine a world where he pulls political power, one of the tracks, world government. On the song and video, the world boss outlines his political vision offering a house and a Mercedes for every impoverished child, free education, and the promises of a better Jamaica and a better world. The song is a testament or a te is testament to Carter's ability to create and showcases his prowess in the dance hall arena, right? So that is what this paper is suggesting that in his music, he has this ambition that he is going to become prime minister and offer Jamaicans free education, right? And that every household will, will be prosperous because they'll be able to ride a Mercedes Benz, okay, whatever, all right? That sort of delusional mind that is typical of people in the inter entertainment realm, right? The, the, the likes of Vibes Cartels. But what is interesting is that Vibes Cartel actually co-wrote a book with Michael Dawson, and Michael Dawson is, you know, a playwright in Jamaica, right? A very prominent playwright in Jamaica. Now, the, the thing is that I started reading that book and he and Vibes Cartel, who co-wrote that book, you know, 
it, he suggested, you know, that Five Scotland is the primary author, but I think that that book was written by, you know, by by him, right? By him, Michael Dawson, you know, with very minimal Five Scotland's input. But he is um, a joint business entrepreneur. I think that they work together, that they have a business that they run together, right? So Five Scotland and Michael Dawson are, you know, entrepreneurs and they collaborate my understanding um in those business adventures the thing about the book is that vibes carter presents himself as the leader and someone who wants to take jamaicans out of babylon right the babylonian system as we learned you know from the bob marley's music from rastafarianism that the system of oppression they call Babylon, and it is Vibes Cartel's intention, his quest to take us, to take Jamaicans out of Babylon because he thinks that they are being oppressed. Now, he presents himself and Jamaicans as a victim, right, that all of us are being oppressed, and he is going to be the Moses, the leader who will be able to take Jamaica out of that sort of realm. I'm sorry I did not bring excerpts from the book to read because there is, you know, uh, what I consider to be the thesis of the book, the fact that he's mentioning that he's he stands as this person who is innocent and he is going to append the system in Jamaica, this brutal system of oppression. He is going to be able to do that. Right, because he has the influence and he has the following, right? The followers, there are hundreds of thousands of followers that he has, that he has garnered for himself. And perhaps people will be willing to um, have him become prime minister of Jamaica. But that idea is also not far-fetched because in an interview, which Vibes Carter participated in um, with his lawyer, that's Isa Buchanan. Um, he mentioned that he is, well, he intimated that he's going to be running for MP for St. Catherine, you know, I think that era in Portmore, I, I believe. So he has on his list, on his bucket list, to become a member of parliament, okay, in Jamaica's parliament, right? Someone who is known for his you know, his lewd lyrics and for promoting criminality is going to be one day sitting in Jamaican parliament, right? I just want you to understand that. I just want you to understand that we're living in some very dark times, some very dark days and dark and obscene days are ahead. And we have to get our thinking together, right? Or thought processes together. Because many people are just walking and they think that, you know, government is something that is clean and they're going to lead you into the land of milk and honey. And I'm here suggesting to you that we are living some of the darkest moments in Western history than you have ever seen, right? So you better be getting your act together. Now, we have, let's, there's a lot to declare. So we have here, um, let me see if I can, uh, but cartel supporters threatened former Jamaican culture minister over remarks about dance hall's violent lyrics. And it was done in 2018 when Lisa Hannah on the stand, you know, was talking about Vibes Cartel and the fact that she intimated, she suggested, she did not really call his name, <laughs> that, you know, some of the music which um, Jamaica produces, you know, is promoting violence and it's affecting our society in a negative way manner or in a negative way. And she was right. And she intimated that someone, you know, of that sort of ilk had been imprisoned. And of course, her, you know, Vibes Carter's fans, you know, were very offended. And she even received death threats because she makes, you know, she dared to say something like that. Uh, let me see if I could see what she says here about him. Uh, I don't, uh, if, if I see what the debate over... Um, yeah, I'm not seeing it right now, but the, I have the article here. She's, well, this is what she says. Um, Hannah, as a former Miss World, famous for her glamorous Instagram account and therefore no stranger to social media, defended her stance in, in a lengthy Facebook post because she was saying that, you know, I, 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 want, I want to read her quote, what she said about him. 
or the dancehall music, but I'm not seeing it in the article right now. And I don't want to let the, yes, yeah, she says, imagine the outcry then when Lisa Han, the country's former culture minister and current member of parliament, which was 2018 by the, well, 2000, before 2018, could be 2014, suggested that there may need to be less of a democracy. And when it comes to uh, trying to instill values in youth, Values that are at odds with the messages they hear from the music being played on the radio. These are Lisa Hanna's you know, statements. Even though Hannah did not call his name, she singled out Vibes Cartel when she spoke about persons we know are incarcerated, persons we know have questionable value systems. But I understand that Lisa Hanna was, you know, prepared to use one of Vice Carter's song on her in her political campaign. Not sure if that is true. But this is the hypocrisy in our um in the political realm where we have sometimes leaders, you know, pandering to the base. And then, you know, at another occasion, you find them doing things that they say that they are against. Right now, but Lisa Hanna did, you know, post something after she was attacked by Vibe, Vibes Carter's um, fans. Right, she wrote something. She says, "I'm unapologetic lover of music, including dance hall." But there's no necessity for some artists to to use music as a medium for promoting violence and abuse of women. The data confirms that violent and sexually explicit lyrics have negatively influenced many Jamaican youth thought processes, though through sorry increased feelings of hostility and aggression. These negative influences are exacerbated when we turn a blind eye to radio airplay of new productions by persons we know are incarcerated, so many have been abetted by corruption in our prison system. So th these are the words of Lisa Han, right? I think she was, you know, functioning. She was a former minister of culture and entertainment. So she would have been, you know, um, fit to talk about that, right? It was in her, you know, parameters, right? In her remit to speak about what was happening to our youths, right? And the influence of, you know, lewd lyrics, lewd dance hall lyrics on Jamaican social values or on young people, on the young minds in Jamaica. She was qualified to speak on that because she would be seeing it and she was also, you know, um, functioning in that ministry. Now, the star, there is a an article here in the star. I'm not sure if this star is coming. It could be a star from another Caribbean country. I don't, I'm not sure if this is a star coming from Jamaica. But the commentary is being here, would you believe Vibes Carter for Prime Minister? Would you believe, right? Let me share that my screen with you so that you can see what I'm reading from, right? Because you might think that this guy is making up some stories, right? But he said, would you believe Vibes Carter for Prime Minister? You know, it was interesting before I read this article in his book. It's almost like he's presenting himself as two different personalities. So you have one vibes cartel, the actor, the musician, the um dancehall singer, whatever you will, whatever you want to call him. And then you have Adidja Parlo, who is his, you know, that's his legal name, right? And that's another person. So when you're speaking about the vibes cartel, you have to reference him as such and see him functioning in those two different worlds, right? And having those two different personalities. That is what you have to understand. That's the impression that the book gave, by the way. I'm still reading it, so I can't really delve deep into the analysis of that book. It is an interesting book, and he has some valid points that he has raised. I did not like, however, that he's comparing himself with the likes of people like Michael Nexus and the Marcus Garvey's, right? He seems to think that because these people were you know, imprisoned. He thinks that he's on a path now for social liberation. Now, so they're presenting him as this Moses, if you will, as this Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who was also actually accused of wrongdoing. Right? So that is the impression that Vibes Carter is presenting to us, that he has been wrongly accused and now he's rightfully claiming his place of a liberator in society. And he's here now to defend the interests 
of ghetto people because I think the, the, the title of his book is The Voice of Ghetto People, something of a sort, right? The Voice of Ghetto People, something to of that nature, right? That is the title of his book. But let's go back to the article. Would it vibes Carter? Would you believe, you know, let me go back, let me share my screen. Would you, where is it now? Right. Would you believe Vibes Cartel for prime minister? For the purposes of an article, he was writing for a British journal. A Jamaican friend asked for my answers to the following questions. What kind of influence, if any, do you think Jamaican politics has had on the Eastern Caribbean? And what would you say is the most telling impact? Right. And his response is, I'm not sure I know specifically how Jamaican politics have influenced the rest of the region. It is, however, undeniable that the St. Lucian voter learned a long time ago how to turn his vote into a bargaining chip, if not fast cash. I remember expressing during a talk show uh, my disappointment with one of our political leaders who had not delivered on his campaign to work towards certain attitudinal changes where the electorate was concerned. I referred specifically to the fact that he had chosen conveniently to swim downstream, that is to say, gone with the low, rather than tackle the still relatively new problem of vote vending. So you have, you know, voter, votes being bought and sold. Now, he made a very interesting point at the end of the article here. Um, he says that the youth are not likely to be calling for younger leaders, if only because they know no one in his right mind, regardless of age, will challenge the leader for reason already gone into. We're a lot of we are in a lot of trouble in the Caribbean, and not only because of the politicians, nearly all of whom are considered corrupt. That is sad, right? That's a sad indictment on our political leaders in the Caribbean. And he continues, either overtly or tacitly and waiting to be caught with their hand in the tail. It's a given. It's the public image, which is why corrupt entrepreneurs have not trouble or have no trouble rather approaching our, polit uh, our politicians, I would think he says, our politicals, right? So he said that corrupt entrepreneurs have no trouble approaching our politicals or politicians, birds of a feather. But he continues here. The, the print is sort of very, let me see if I can make it bigger so I can um, see much clearly, right? It's sort of fine, right? Let me make it a little bigger so you can have very good, all right? So that is what, where, where are we now? So then there's a general attitude around these parts that young people cannot be trusted at any rate, not as much as their seasoned co colleagues who have had years to establish their blinkered uh, support bases. Of course, our biggest problem is the quality of citizen produced in these islands. Undoubtedly, the result of ever-increasing poverty, lack of useful skills, lack of employment opportunities, kids growing up without parents or with parents who are themselves lost souls, and drugs, drugs, drugs. Now listen to what he says about Jamaica. Come to think about it, perhaps the real influence of Jamaica transcends politics. For not only did Jamaica make marijuana or ganja glamorous, which we did through Bob Marley, there is also Jamaican music that is synonymous with marijuana smoking and tends to encourage a certain behavior among the most vulnerable young citizens. All right? Count on it. Today's vulnerable youth without appropriate intervention are doomed to be tomorrow's uh, duchesses, right, or prime ministers or both at the same time, right? So they can become the Dodosis, right? We could, I'm sure that he's talking about Christopher Dodos Coke, right? So they, it's possible based on our level of criminality and corruption that you can have criminals and politics, you know, working in the same room, right? Because that is how corrupt our societies have become. Right? And this is, I think, the story is coming from St. Lucia. So, this, so it's not only happening in uh, St. Lucia or in Jamaica, it's happening in other parts of the, of the Caribbean, right? So that is what we have to understand. Now, Vibes Cartel has been released, right? And he is feeling himself, right? And let me show you an image of him. And it's interesting to note that Vibes Cartel 
you know, has been released and he has all of this, you know, um, what you call handkerchief or scarf over his face. He's blocking his face. Even in the interview he had with Isaac McCallan the other day on TikTok. By the way, that interview was interesting, right? Wasn't it? I didn't watch all of it, but I was flabbergasted as it were to see that he, Isaac McCallan, right, could have garnered so many viewers. When I joined, there was 20, over 23,000 odd live people watching what was happening. And then I think when I came up, it, it had grown 26,000 live streamers who were actually following and what was happening at the interview with Vibes Cartel. And Vibes Cartel has this thing over his, his face, this green, not green, but orange handkerchief, right? And he came out of prison with this sort of image and almost like this Freemasonry um, signs, right? You could see the secret signs coming from him, um, that sort of thing. Now, this is what he is. And there are, you know, rumors, I should say, right? I'm not using the word conspiracies, but let us say that there are rumors suggesting that he could be aligning himself with the PNP party. But it's very weird because, you know, you have people, the likes of Peter Bontings who come out against the fact that he has been released. So let's see, because nothing that we hear and see really means that it is true, right? Because when you see, you know, people like Peter Bontings and coming out and talking about against him, they just, sometimes they are playing to their base, you know, sometimes it's not out of, even though they can also be personal enemies, you know, business enemies, we don't know. But don't always believe what you hear or what you see, even when it looks like it might be true. So the, the, the article here is our coming from today, our today, and it's, I have to pinch myself, said Vibes Cartel in his first interview since his release. And why are these people at the Fox you know, uh, network, the Fox the, the Fox 5 New York. Why are these people so interested in Vibes, Vibes Carter's release? In an exclusive interview, in, in an exclusive interview with Fox 5's Lisa Evers on Sunday, August 4, a did Jeff Vibes Cartel Palmer described his feelings toward being free after 13 years behind bars. Lisa Evers, a prominent American reporter and host of the popular TV and radio show Fox 5 New York has been keeping up to date with Carter's case throughout his legal battles, right? The feeling of just being free is an amazing feeling, said Vibes Carter when asked how he felt about being a free man. It's so surreal. I have to pinch myself just to see that I am awake. Now, this is a Vibes Carter that is the hero of Jamaica and one who might eventually become the prime minister of Jamaica. Make no bones about it. It's possible. Carter's legal battle was long one, was a long one, and even felt as if there would be no positive end for the dance hall legend. Ultimately, the artist was granted an acquittal by the Court of Appeal of Jamaica, along with his co accused on Friday, July 31st. So the international press, he's had international reporting um, on him, right? And that's something that is interesting. You know, because he is this larger than life person and who will perhaps, you know, go to uh, Jamaica House, right? So from the Adult Correctional Center to Jamaica House. That's a possibility because this society that we live in, right? And yesterday, was it yesterday that Muta Baruka on his program had, you know, I listened to this excerpt from his program in which he had... You know, there was an interview uh, uh, and which he, you know, um, which he included on his program, right, um, which he aired on his program that, you know, was interviewing some women in downtown Kingston on the day of Vibes Carter's release from prison. And these two women who are obviously ghetto women, what we call ghetto, quote unquote, ghetto women, you know, one of whom suggested that, you know, an eye for an eye and a, and a, and a tooth for a tooth. Vibes Carter should be released because if, you know, Clive had stepped on his feet, right, if he had offended him, did him something wrong, then that's the only way that Vibes Carter, you know, had to deal with him, to, to chop him to pieces, right? This is some, something that somebody said. One of our citizens said that it's an eye for an eye. If somebody really offends you, then you might have to take it um, to the extreme level, which Vibes Carter purportedly did. 
right? Or allegedly did. We're not suggesting on this show that he did it. We're saying that that are those were the allegations. That is what he was alleged to have done. So let me be very careful here with how I express myself. Now, the also another lady said that, you know, it wasn't like a lawyer that he killed or a big man. And big man suggests here, so a doctor or somebody who holds a prominent position in the society, you know, that life would have been more important than the life of a Clive Lizard, right? That is what they were suggesting. And these are women, one, they're women, right? And secondly, they are exploited women, women who are living in the ghetto era. So this is this, this is a sort of scholarship is, or, or following, <laughs> so scholarship, but this is the sort of following that Vibes Carton has, right? This is what he has. And there are people who will excuse him, right? No matter what he does, right? They will vindicate his character, even when he might be guilty even though he might be culpable. Something that you have to understand. Now, let's continue because I have to move on to other things. Um, we have here, our today, Makalu Vibes Cartel is a Jamaican national hero loved by all. And I'm gonna share this with you because this is a very important you know, comment that this guy was making. You know, so we have here, uh, this was written by Makulu. Right, and Vibes Cartel was published on February 17th, 2024. Vibes Cartel is a Jamaican national hero loved by all. Right, so we have here jailed dance hall artist Vibes Cartel enjoys fervent support from all sections of Jamaican society, all sections, right, including the upper elites, the upper echelons of society. He has the support from them. The entire country. Right? This is an indictment on that ghetto country. The entire country is rooting for him to win the Privy Council case and have it thrown out so that he can walk free and get back to making more tunes, right? Because we have to, to sing and jump up and behave like slaves, because that is what we like to do, right? That is our purpose. The most slave like, plantation like country in the Caribbean. Now, speaking from um, Pimil, Pimil, Pimlico, London, solicitor Irving Thomas told our today, Jamaicans love to embrace, and I'm quoting him, and he's right. He's sharing all of his thoughts are correct, are, are, on, are, are on point, are spot on. And he says here, Jamaicans love to embrace lawlessness. What have I been saying? Jamaicans love to embrace lawlessness. They love the bad man. It permeates culture. This mindset transcends socioeconomic divisions. Even experienced Jamaican lawyers are supporting this bloke, right? Even experienced Jamaican lawyers, including the guy there, his lawyer, um, Isaac Buchanan, right? They are supporting, they're all in support of him. And it's interesting why he eventually chose Isaac Buchanan, you know, and Isaac Buchanan was also alleged to have been a criminal in the United States. He was deported, um, but went back to law school. So it's interesting, you know, all of the dynamics here, the connections are interesting ones. Because wasn't Bert Samuels one of his lawyers and um, another lady there? I was amazed at the level of support for him at the Privy Council. He is to pack. Biggie, Elvis, and Sinatra all rolled into one. Jamaicans don't care about the atrocities he's said to have committed. They love him regardless, right? They love him regardless, right? In this murder conviction appeal, Vibes Cartel is defended by the PNP's Isaac Buchanan, and Isaac Buchanan is PNP. So it could be that that's why he wants to be PNP. It could be that is how he's going to get the following and the influence on Jamaican youths to go and vote for the PNP government, right? So this could be also a political machination. We don't know, all right? We do not know. And I'm just saying, because I am a thinker, and many of you are suggesting, oh, you're sounding intelligent, but you're not, you're a dunce. You are the dunce ones because you don't think, 
right? You don't think. And that is why the investors and other people can come there and exploit you and treat you like a slave because you love to be slaves, right? I stand up and I'm proud to be who I am. And I'm not going to allow anybody to shackle my mind as most Jamaicans like to be shackled and their minds are indeed shackled. So you can allow Vibes Cartel and his minions, right, to shackle you because Vibes Cartel is definitely demonic, right? There's nothing in my mind to say otherwise. I pray for him and I hope that he will give his heart to Christ who can transform him and make him into a new creature. Because the creature, that creature, the creature that he's now functioning as is a very depraved one, right? To say the least, very depraved one, okay? Now, this is what he is. So the lawyer is spot on. He says that Jamaican, we do like criminality. Um, one of the, 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 the Casey barristers prosecuting the case, this is the big case in Jamaica. It's on the news every night. There are crowds outside the courtroom, crowds inside the courtroom, right? It's a big news, right? It's the news of the IMF is not a big news anymore, but the news of Vibes Cartel is a big news. Recently, there was the screening of the Bob Marley One Love movie, which has revitalized his popularity and reinvigorated his standing as a national icon. But is Vibes Carter bigger than Marley in Jamaica? That's the question being asked. Does what he champions and sings about resonate more with young people today than Bob Marley's messages? And I would say yes. Who is the bigger cultural phenomenon in Jamaica today? Get to youths, love Carter. So too do uptown people. Even the establishment favor him. Right? So even the establishment favor Vibes Cartel, right? This is the sort of society, the, 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 the social decadence that is evident in our society, right? That is evident in our society. But look here, this man was known to have, you know, been married to a Jamaican called, is, 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 is her name Tana, Tanisha or Tanasha or whatever her name was, and she's called Shorty. But this one now, he has a new wife, uh, uh, apparently, right, whom he has not yet gotten married to, but he considers to be his wife. She's wifey, right, uh, wifey to the hobby, right, and he has claimed her to be his wife. How that has happened, I don't know, but she is actually um, British of Turkish descent, and she studied, I think, psychology in school, and she functioned in the capacity as a social worker. So she's a social worker. And it, it seems like she met Vibes Carter through his music in, 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 in Britain, and she just fell in love with him. And she has been traversing the island since 2015, where she has gotten in touch with him. But I think the first time she met him was um, in 2019. And she's now in charge of everything, his finances, his social media network, everything she's in charge of. And, you know, this is the woman that he is endeared to right now. Her name is Sidem Osturk, right? And she is, of course, British of Turkish descent. So her parents are, in fact, Turkish, I believe. People are speculating about Vibes Carter's relationship with wife Tanisha Johnson, so she's the Jamaican shorty, as they have not addressed their separation or newer engagements. And what sort of this, you know, morality and value system are we teaching? You know, the fact that he was married and had three children with this Tanisha Johnson, and suddenly now he's with this new lady, you know, from Great Britain who is of Turkish descent. Dancehall DJ Vibes Carter and Tanisha Johnson started dating in the early 2000s and were married in common law, right? So they were married in common law. They were probably not even married at a church you know, because Vibes Carter doesn't believe in religion, according to Kim. Through their relationship, the couple have three children together. Their three sons were still very young when Vibes Carter was convicted of homicide of Clive Lizard Williams. So these are his three boys, right? And the, the short here, the Tanisha Johnson, right? So that's Tanisha Shorty Johnson was briefly active in the music industry and owns the label Short Boss 
Music. She's currently the CEO of the beauty brand Boss Lady Skin Cream and has a YouTube channel cooking with Tanisha. Oh, as she does uh, have a YouTube, a YouTube channel. So they are entrepreneurs as it were. So here we see this lady again, the wifey, which is Sidem. Um, what's her name? I don't want Sidem Ostark, right? Yeah, she, she is Sidem Ostark, and she is now the new wifey. How that is happening, and he has allowed her to have taken control of everything, including his social media network, is a mystery to me. Selem Osterk studied psychology and is a social worker of Turkish heritage. She moved recently to Jamaica to be closer to her lover, right? So this is a sort of system in which we live. Now, there are so lots of speculations and rumors and conspiracies are going around that, you know, she is a secret agent who has been sent to take Vibes Cartel down. Is she really? And... We cannot, we cannot, some of these rumors also might have some amount of truth to it because we know that in many of these so called black entertainers, including the Whitney Houston's and the Michael Jackson's, and some of these very popular uh, singers, entertainers have been taken down, right? And many of our sports entertainers also, they are known to marry into, you know, different races, ethnic, you know. Uh, groups, if you will, people, uh, you know, they have wives of different ethnic backgrounds because a lot of times, you know, these owners of these slaves who are entertainers do not want the money to, you know, um, to be bequeathed to the community, to the to their community, to the to, to the members of their ethnic group. So they tend to foist onto them um, people. And sometimes it might be real love, but, you know, sometimes, you know, these powers that be, they attract them, right, with other people, the, the, the Lilas of this world. And Vibes Carter might just have been attracted to her. I don't know. You know, who knows what's going, really going on behind the scenes. But that is what she, who she is now. I'm not sure if they're going to be just common law husband and wife or they will officially get married, right? Time will tell. Now, the whole concept, let me see if I can go on to some, move on to something else that is... Uh, I would like to highlight because there are so many things to highlight that I can't highlight everything. Now, so that is what we're saying. Um, the, so Vibes Cartel is up for being a prime minister. The question is being asked also, is Vibes Cartel a Freemason, right? And he has been asked that question many times. Is he religious? And I think this was the best show that he expressed his thoughts, his sentiments on. And we are going to listen to whether he is a Freemason or not. I think he is, right? And that is how he has powerful connections behind him. And that's why he was able to be made free and enjoyed a lot of privileges in during prison because he was able to, you know, to make his songs and, you know, and do a lot of things that I'm sure ordinary people could not do. And when I say ordinary, those of us who are not connected with secret societies. Right, but listen to what he's saying in this interview. Vibes Carter talk about the Freemasons and didn't deny. On the community, so that is why we get that label. What about the cult? That you're a member of a cult? Uh, I, which, all right. A lot of people say Vibes Carter sell his soul to the devil. I'd like to know how the selling of one's soul to the devil go. Like if you put out an ad in the green and saying soul for sale, good condition. You know what I mean? And the devil contacts you, he, he writes a check, or he gives your manager a check, and they change it. I want to know how that goes, because that is news to me. I don't know how somebody can sell his soul to the devil. Okay. Does the devil have a bank account? But are you a member of a group of, of Freemasonry? No, I'm not a member of any group of Freemasons, but what is Freemasonry? Nothing is wrong with Freemasonry. Okay. Masons build the earth. That's why if you look on a Freemasonry, you see the compass and the square. Because that is what built the earth. The earth is built from lines and circles. Do you believe in God? Vibes Cartel is a spiritual person. I'm not a religious person. So when you say believe in God, if you mean Jesus, I'm not a religious person like that. God in the context of Christendom. Of Christianity. No, I don't believe in Christianity. I don't believe in Buddhism. I don't believe in Islam. Because to me, religion is division. It's just one more thing to divide people. Religious wars are the most violent wars in history. 
And it can be proven with even the recent 9 11 attacks in New York City. That is a religious war. Is there a supreme being in your consciousness? In your... My supreme being would be life. You know, life is the ultimate because life is ever continuing. That's why the world is a circle. Because anything that is circular is always mobile. Life goes on. Vibes Cartel comes on the earth as kids. Vibes Cartel dies. These kids grow up, have kids, they die, and so on and so on. So I believe in life. Not in any one religious being. I say Jesus. I say I'm going to believe in Buddha. I'm going to believe in Allah. You know what I mean? Because when Vibes Cartel travels the world, I've been to Japan. Billions of millions of people in Japan, they don't know about Jesus. They, 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 they have their own God. So in the Christian view, all of those people, when they die, they would be going to hell. And in the Japanese view, all the Christians, when they die, they would be going to hell. So that in itself alone is confusion. So I think far, Rastafari is a way of life. Rastafari is a way of life that is more acceptable to have somebody like Vibes Cartel. It's not a religion, it's a way of life. So you don't you don't think it, it offers that... So that is his um, you know, take on, on religion. Um, he's more spiritual. What he doesn't understand is that you know, his being spiritual means that he has some form of religion, right? Whether we like it or not, because, you know, there are just two spirits in the world. We have the forces of evil and the forces of good, right? So he decides which side he wants to side on. All of these religions, yes, belong to either side, but there's only one. And we know that there's only one way, and that way is through Christ. So he can talk all he wants to talk. And God is the ultimate judge. The people who live in Japan and all these countries, he doesn't know the you know missionary work that many people do and how people are converted and the experience that they have in life. He doesn't know. We can't say what people do in their everyday life, right? Because we don't see the full picture and we can't. We do not have that power. We are not omnipresent, right? As involves God. So he can't say what God is going to do or not do. The important matter is to make your decision, your individual decision. God is not looking at the group. He's looking at your individual heart, right? And he is going to judge us, you know, individually. He's not going to judge us collectively as a nation, right? Or as a culture. He is going to judge us based on our individual efforts and our works, right? That is important for us to understand. Now, um, let's look at the, so this is what Vibes Cartel is about. And let me show you here, he has a symbol and he still wears that ring of his Freemasonry ring that he showcases, right? And he's had um, for years. Now it's also, yeah, let me see if I, could I make it bigger for you to see? Um, shall we? Uh, it's not coming up here. All right, so you shouldn't see it. <laughs> Maybe you should not see it. So um, I can't make it bigger. So this is what it is. And hopefully you can see that this is what it is, right? The Freemasonry ring. So he is a proud Freemasonry. Uh, Freemason, not Freemasonry, but that's the practice. Freemason, all right? He's a part of the lodge. Now, many of our entertainers, entertainers are, right? Whether they be in sports and these very well-known track athletes and basketball players and you know football players they all belong to a secret lodge and lodges because you know they make millions of dollars some bill you know millions of dollars and you know so when you are aligned with so much money you know you have to keep secrets it's important for you to keep secrets of these people in the upper echelons who have made you into their slaves by the way so you know the people like the um What's his name again? The what Beyonce's husband, right? They I forgot his name now. Um, yeah, but Beyonce's husband, Jay Z's, right? The Jay Z's of the world, right? And I understand that he is about to collaborate with these people, with the Beyonces and the um Nikki, is it Nikki uh, Minaj or whatever her name is? I don't know these people, so you know I I read about them. But the Minajes of the world, I think she's from Trinidad, and also with um. The Kardashians, right, which are known, particularly the Kardashians, for their, you know, their dabble into the satanic realm, right? These people are known for that. And these are the people with whom Vibes Cartel is going to be promoting to elevate dancehall music on the global stage, right? And that is why perhaps you can see the networks, you know, that they 
Fox 5 New York, they were so much, you know, caught up and involved in Vives Carter's case, in the Vives Carter's case and his release. Something, some very interesting, you know, developments that you have to follow. And this it's deeper than that. Right. I am just even scratching the surface. You know, I'm not even sure I'm doing a good job of scratching the surface surface as I speak. You know, in my head, I had lots of other things that I wanted to highlight. But sometimes when you come before the cameras, you're just not really getting everything is not coming from your mind. You know, it doesn't your ideas don't flow as they flow in your head prior, prior to coming on on screen. Right. But it is what it is. And I think I have actually cultivated, as it were your minds to think, right? Titivated your intellect so that you can do your own research and go get, get a copy of the voice of Get Your People and read it, right? But it is possible, ladies and gentlemen, that Vibes Cartel might become or is being prepped to becoming our next prime minister, whether it be in 2028 or thereabout, it seems that it's on track. And that is one of his ambitions. The book that he has written, The Voice of Getter Youth, I think that could be the book that will get him elected because he has written, as it were, you know, uh, I wouldn't say it's a memoir, but yeah, it could be a, a memoir, even though it's also co-written back with, along with Michael Dawson. And Michael Dawson speaks highly, right? His, his co-author speaks highly of Vance Cartel because he, according to him, he's a graduate of Camden College. And also, he was um, elected or selected to have gotten the Distinguished uh, Medal of Honor, some Medal of Freedom that was going to be given to him by George W. Bush, right? The Congress Medal of, Medal of Freedom. And he rejected that because he wanted to go back to Jamaica or didn't want to be associated with white people, right? He rejected that and he... Um, I think he got some honorary, you know, award from the Marcus Garvey's um, Institute in Jamaica, something of the sort, you know, some nonsense like that. So in, in other words, he wants to, he wants to cement himself. He says that he, Michael Dawson suggested that he gave up that um, Medal of Freedom that was going to be granted or given to him, you know, um, by the U.S. Congress, you know, under the presidency of George Dr. Bush. So this, he was just citing his importance, right? And that he gave up all of that honor to go to Jamaica and to have received um, some honorary award from the Marcus Garvey's Institute in Jamaica. Something, you know, some very interesting things and we don't know who is who and, but what we can say in Jamaica is a small space. So they're all interconnected and whether it's JLP or it's UNP, you know, it seems that they have all these Freemasons, they're all Freemasons and they, you know, join up together and they have their table talks and they drink and they have fun, right? While you, the followers, are just trying to fight over them and to, you know, fight over the spoils, right? When are you going to wake up and see that what a, a lot of what you see is not what you get, Right? A lot of what you see is not what you get. But I think Vibes Carter is a possibility. He might not win, but I think that he might just win and become a member of parliament in Jamaica's parliament, right? Because that is where we are now, right? That anybody can become member of parliament, right? Anybody can become member of parliament. Thank you so much for joining. Hope that you will like and you'll share and you subscribe. Remember now that you have to like and you have to comment so that it will trigger the algorithms so that the videos can be shared with as many people as possible on the platform. Thank you for joining. All the best. Bye.